In this video, we'll focus on elasticities. In particular, we'll focus on elasticity of demand. There are other types of elasticities, which is the elasticity of supply, income elasticity, or the cross-price elasticity, which we'll focus on in subsequent videos. For this video, we're interested in the relationship between price and quantity demanded, or consumption. So when price increases, quantity demanded decreases. And when prices decrease, naturally quantity demanded should increase. So we have a negative relationship between the two of them. What elasticities allow us to do is to calculate the sensitivity of a price change and how it affects our consumption pattern. So on the left hand side here, we've got the price elasticity of demand formula, which is equal to the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. What we're doing here is just basically trying to find out the elasticity on the left, on the right, from the right hand side to the left hand side, putting it into a formula. This will allow us to calculate the elasticities for each type of product. So if we have a look below, we have five different cases. These five different cases represent five different elasticities or sensitivities to a price change. So for example, if we use our unitary elastic case here as our neutral case, Anything to the right hand side, so the relative elastic case and the perfectly elastic case, represent situations of luxury products. And anything on the left hand side, where we have our inelastic cases, perfectly inelastic and relatively inelastic cases, represents a situation of a necessity product. Luxury products normally have many substitutes available, but necessity goods don't have many substitute goods available, so not many substitutes available. Understand from this is that if a product has many substitutes available, then when there's a price increase, we react very sensitively to that price increase because we can substitute that product for a cheaper product. But if the product is on the left hand side, which is an inelastic situation, then even if the price increases, we can't be very sensitive to a price change. We can now understand this. So what we have in a perfectly inelastic situation is something like insulin. And a perfect relatively inelastic case, we have something like petrol. These are two products that don't have many substitutes available. This is also that the demand curves are very steep in nature in the first two cases. So inelastic has a very steep demand. In the relatively elastic case, we have a situation where we can understand something like a product like Doritos, and the perfectly elastic case, we can have something like an orange. The demand curves all differ. So if we go from the perfectly inelastic case all the way to the perfectly elastic case, we see that the demand curves gets very flat. How we understand this now is, for example, if I just do this, if I just close the top there and I close the bottom, it spells inelastic. And on the top we have, if we close that one, we spell elastic. So when a demand curve is inelastic, it will always be steep and it will represent a situation where you have necessity products and you are not sensitive to a price change. Whereas in the elastic situation, we have a flat demand curve, which represents a situation where we have luxury products. And here we are very sensitive to a price change. So that sums up what elastic and inelastic mean from a theoretical perspective. The maths and understand it using the formula that we've got written on the top left hand corner. Making use of the formula for the price inelastic case, we'll write down price elasticity of demand and let's assume what happens here. Let's assume that there's a price increase from P0 to P1. Quantity demanded 
as you can see below does not change so how we enter into this into the formula is let's say for example we say that there's a 30 percent increase in the price of a product but there's a zero percent decrease in the quantity demand so what we have here is a situation where zero divided by anything gives you a answer of zero and we can conclude that in a perfectly inelastic situation our price elastic of demand will always equal to zero in the second case we can also assume a 30 percent increase in the price of petrol will lead to a slight decrease in the quantity demanded but not a lot if you look here the price increase is a lot larger than the quantity demanded decrease so what we can say is that let's say for example we have a 30 percent increase in price results in a 10 percent decrease in quantity demanded and this 10 percent decrease will get a negative in front of in front of the value this just basically tells us that the demand curve is downward sloping so what we'll get is a negative value which is equal to negative 0.33 but because all these demand curves are downward sloping we normally use absolute values to classify or to qualify what relatively inelastic actually is so in this case we would just say that the price elasticity of demand is actually just 0.33 in a relatively inelastic case the price elasticity of demand is always less than one going on to the unitary elastic case we can assume a similar situation so here a price increase of 30 percent will be equally matched by the decrease in quantity so we have an increase there we can say that the price increased by 30 percent and we have an equal decrease in quantity demanded of 30 percent now don't forget to put your negative there and we return negative one but we know that we're using absolute values so we can say in a unitary elastic case the price elasticity of demand is equal to one in a relative elastic case this is now where things change so for example if there was a an increase of say 10 percent in the product we'll experience a much larger decrease in the quantity demanded of the product this is because many substitutes are available for this particular type of product and if the price increases by a little bit we have a big reaction to the to the change in the price therefore we can now go and consume something else so that's how you need to remember this when we have our price elasticity of demand formula we can say that there's an increase in of 10 percent in price but this leads to a 30 percent decrease in quantity demanded don't forget your negative there as well has a big sensitivity or a large sensitivity towards a price change when considering a product like doritos so what we have here is a negative three which we can now do an absolute value for it and we can say that the price elasticity of demand for a relatively elastic good is always greater than one this deals with a situation like an orange where it has no special features, but there are lots of substitutes. If the price increases by too much, people normally just consume another product. As we can see here, the price does increase or decrease because the situation represents perfect competition. So let's have a look. If we put this onto the formula, we have a situation where our price does not change now. And whatever happens on the top, whether there's a 10% increase or decrease in quantity demanded, our answer here on the calculator will be undefined and how we classify this is through an infinity sign where our price elasticity of demand is equal to infinity so these are all situations whereby if the price increases for a particular good what happens to our consumption for that particular good so to summarize we can say that when a good is inelastic in nature and when a good is elastic in nature we can say that we have a steep demand curve which represents a situation of a necessity product and our elasticity could either be equal to zero or our elasticity could be less than 
one. And that's how we know that it's an inelastic situation. On the elastic side, we could have a flat demand curve, which represents a product that is luxury in nature and has many substitutes. And the price elasticity of demand could either equal infinity or the price elasticity of demand would be greater than one. This is basically what you need to know for elasticity when a product is inelastic in nature or when the product is elastic in nature.